For the AP exam, understanding the firm's production decision using graphs is key. You need to be able to look at a graph showing a firm's costs and the market price and figure out how many units of a good the firm should produce and how much profit it will make. Let's spend some time on this type of graph to get a deeper understanding. Here's a graph for our golden snitch firm. The horizontal axis shows how many golden snitches the firm is making. The vertical axis is in dollars. It shows the cost at different levels of output. First, let's draw the average cost curve. As we've seen already, this should have a U shape. We can also draw the marginal cost curve. Marginal cost starts low, but goes up to diminishing marginal productivity. The marginal cost curve crosses the average cost curve at the very bottom of the U. Remember, as long as marginal costs are below average costs, average costs are dropping. As long as marginal costs are higher than average costs, then average costs are getting pulled upwards. For this reason, the two lines cross when average costs are at the bottom of the U. This is all kind of interesting, but we still need to figure out how many units the golden snitch firm should produce. As we discussed a few lectures ago, a firm always wants to produce at the point where marginal costs equal to marginal revenue. That is where it's climbed to the top of the hill. If the next unit brings in more revenue than it costs, the firm should definitely produce it. But where's the marginal revenue in this graph? To know that, we need to know the price of a good. In a perfectly competitive market, this is easy. The firm can't affect the market price. So let's assume for this example that the price of the good is $9. It's just an assumption for now. Then what's the marginal revenue from the first unit? It can sell that unit at $9, so the marginal revenue is 9 What's the marginal revenue of the second unit? Same price, same marginal revenue. It's 9 So in a perfectly competitive market, marginal revenue is constant. It's a straight horizontal line, and you draw it in wherever the market price is. So what should a firm produce? Now it's easy. It should produce wherever marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This happens whenever the marginal revenue line crosses the marginal cost line. That's right here at six units. Now, can we figure out total profits at this point? Absolutely. Profits equal revenues minus cost. Revenues just equal the number of units the firm sold times the price it sold them for. If it sells six units at $9 each, that makes six times nine or $54. Costs are just the average cost of each unit times the total units produced. Let's assume for now that average costs are $4 when the firm produces six units. If the firm makes six units at an average cost of $4, its total costs are six times four, $24. So profit is just $54 minus $24 or $30. Where's this on the graph? On any unit sold, the profit the firm makes on that unit is the difference between the price it sells for and the cost of producing the unit. You can see that on the graph as this line measuring the distance between price and average cost. This is how much it makes per unit, and it sells six units. So we sweep this line from here to the vertical axis. The size of this rectangle is the quantity sold, six, times the difference between price and average cost, five. Six times five equals $30, the total profit of the firm. The cool thing about this is that you can look at a graph and quickly figure out two things. How much the firm should produce, and whether the firm's making a profit. So let's draw a new graph. Let's keep the price the same, so marginal revenue is still $9. But let's assume the firm's costs have changed. The government just caught the firm cheating on its taxes. So as punishment, the government is forcing the company to pay a $1 fine for each unit it sells. That means average costs shift up by $1. Here's average cost. It's a U-shape again, but $1 higher. Marginal costs also shift up by $1. Where should the firm produce? Once again, wherever marginal cost crosses marginal revenue. This now happens here at five units. Is the firm still profitable? Yes, because average cost is still below the marginal revenue. So each unit sells for more money than the cost of making it. But now this rectangle representing profit is smaller. The size of the rectangle is the quantity sold, five, times the difference between price and average cost, which is also five. Five times five equals a profit of $25, smaller than the $30 in profit the firm was making before the penalty was imposed. What happens if the price is so low the firm stops making profits? What happens if demand for golden snitches drops? We'll get to that in a few lectures.